Mastering the pen tool is an essential step on the road to understanding Illustrator, but it can be difficult to use when you're starting out. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to master the pen tool, its uses, and some of its key functionality. What's up designers, welcome back to Digifrog Designs. If you're new here, I'm Matt Roberts, brand identity designer and illustrator. To really harness the power of Illustrator, mastering the pen tool is essential. It's one of the most powerful but hardest to use tools. So today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to master the pen tool, its uses and some of its key functionality. In the description box, I'm going to include a link to a file that you can download absolutely free and work along with me. You don't need to input your email or anything like that, just download it and work along. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We post new videos every Wednesday, helping you become a better designer. Let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see from future videos. Let's jump into Illustrator and get started. So now we're in Illustrator, let's take a quick look at the pen tool and some of the functionality that it's got available with it. So the pen tool itself is this tool here. Um, you can access it by clicking here or pressing P on the keyboard. And what we can do is we can just use the left mouse button to plot points. I'm just going to switch it over to a stroke so we can just see the line. And what you'll notice is it's just making sharp corners. To make a rounded corner, what we do is when we click in, we hold the mouse button in and then we drag the handles out and we can create curves. This is obviously looking pretty rubbish, but just to give you an idea of how it actually functions. Um, and then when we come back round to the beginning, you'll see this circle appear on the, the cursor itself and that means you're going to close the path off. So if we do that, it'll close the path off completely. If you have a path that you're working on and you want to finish it there, you'll see the path itself is actually clung to the mouse. So what you do is we just hit escape and that'll close the path off there. Um, there are a couple of tools associated with the pen tool itself and you can access them by right clicking here and we've got the add anchor point which allows you to add an anchor point to a path or an existing path. We've got delete anchor point, which allows you to delete an anchor point without um, breaking the existing path. And then we've got the anchor point tool, which allows you to manipulate any anchor points and handles that we've got on the on the path. Using the add anchor point, you can add an anchor point to an existing path. We can use the delete anchor point to delete any anchor points that we don't want without breaking the path. And then we have the anchor point tool, which allows us to manipulate any of these paths and anchor points obviously it looks pretty rubbish here but we're going to look at it a little bit deeper and look at creating something um, a little better with it in a moment the key to using the pen tool is understanding how to make good lines and where the anchor points need to sit to make good curves so to show you what i mean i'm just going to grab an ellipse and i'm just going to draw that out and if i select it with the direct selection tool you'll see that all of the anchor points are at the extremes of the shape and all the handles are distributing the weight evenly um, on the line. So what by that I mean, if I pull one of these out a little bit, you'll see that it messes up. Um, let me make it a little bit more obvious for you. So if I pull that a little bit further, you'll see that it starts to make the shape feel really unbalanced. So by the handles being or bearing an even weight load on the line, it actually creates a, a better flowing curve. Another thing you'll notice is the handles themselves are horizontal and vertical. And you'll see what happens if I move these so they're not quite horizontal and vertical. It sends the weight of the shape off slightly. So by having horizontal and vertical, it allows you to evenly distribute the weight along the curves to hopefully create a nicer curve. Obviously, there's some instances where this won't actually work or you might actually need to put your handles at an angle but it's a good rule of thumb to stick to to try and actually create your curves when using the pen tool so now we've looked at the basics of the pen tool and some of the tools that's associated with it let's actually take a look at creating an illustration with it so if you downloaded the file that i've um, linked to in the description box below um, let me unhide this here so you can see the illustration we'll be working with this you'll notice that the illustration itself is on the first layer here and it's got the it's locked and it's dimmed down so we can trace on top of. And you'll notice if you try and trace on top of this now, it won't let you do it. And that's because the layer's locked. So there's a layer above that we're gonna be putting our line work on. So to start off with, I'll always pick a point that's either in a corner or at the extreme of a curve. I just find this works well for me and it creates a good starting point to start from. So I'm gonna make a start here and I'm just gonna pop my anchor point by clicking the left mouse button. 
Um, the next point I'm going to go to is you could either go to the middle of the line here and drag out your handles and then follow it round. But what I'm actually going to do is come straight up to this point here and then I'm just going to hold shift to lock the handles in place. I'm just going to drag the handles out. Once I've dragged those out to somewhere I'm happy with, um, actually before we carry on, I'm just going to beef up the line weight a little bit so we can see what we're working with. From here, I'm going to use the anchor point tool by pressing Alt on the keyboard and I'm going to position, move this handle back here to create, bring the curve back here. And then I'm going to come up to this point up here. Nothing that we're doing at the moment is set in stone, so we can always come back and fine tune some of these points. So if I were to come back here, you can see how I can maneuver that round and manipulate the line whilst carrying on with what I've actually got. So I'm just going to undo that and go back to where I was. Next point, I'm going to come across here and I'm going to pick the extreme point of this curve here. Um, what you can do is you can use a guide and drag a guide out to find out where the extreme of the curve is um, or you can eyeball it. So we've got that there. So I'm just going to pick a point that's in the middle where the curve actually hits that guide. I'm going to click, hold shift and drag out the handles to lock the handles in place. And then I'm going to drag those out. And you'll see how it's starting to follow the shape quite nicely. Moving on, we've got the front here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to click and hold down shift and then drag out the handles to create this front little bull nose. I'm going to come up to here. I'm just going to plot my anchor point. And I kind of want this corner to be quite or well, it's sharp the way I've drawn it so I'm going to keep it quite sharp so I'm just going to plot my anchor point I'm not going to drag the handles out because I want quite a sharp curve there and then I'm going to come to this point here which again I could use a guide to find the extreme and then I'm just going to click hold shift and then drag it out so I'm just going to carry on with a few more of these points and then I'm going to show you how to deal with this arc of the back part of the B so now I've got the head in place, I'm going to, um, we've got two ways that we can approach this back half here. Um, we could either come round and actually follow through onto the wings or just do the body as one separate piece and then the wings as a separate piece, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click and drag out one of my handles to create the start of the curve. And then I'm going to come round here and I'm going to pick the extreme point here again, drag that out. And then I'm going to follow it back round. And as we mentioned before, you'll see when we're at the end, there's the circle showing on the pen tool. So when we click that, it means we've closed off the pen tool. As you can see, it's a little bit weighted down below here. So as I mentioned, we can just go back through and try and align some of these and distribute the weight evenly across the lines. Um, maybe lock that one a bit more there. So it's got a bit more of a wisp in there. Let's do that. So we've got a nice curve in there. So to attack the wings, there's two ways we could go about it as well. We could draw through the shape that we've got here and then use the shape builder, um, which I'm not going to cover in this video. I'll cover in another video. We can use the shape builder to cut off any extra bits. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some points along here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here where I want the wings to start and I'm just going to hit my left mouse button and then I'm just going to draw all the way up to the edge or the tip of the wing here. I'm going to plot my anchor point and then I'm just going to drag out a handle vertically downwards to create this curve that's going to follow along here. And then I'm just going to plot my anchor point to get that in there and then I'm going to plot my anchor point. You can hold shift to lock your lines into like vertical 45 or horizontal so i'm going to do the same again from this point here i'm just going to click and drag out my handle and then i'm going to come down here and then plot my point and then i'm just going to create a straight line all the way back here so i'll plot my point here and then i'm just going to hit escape to close it off so you'll notice here it doesn't necessarily flow quite right with the way the wing's scooping in. So what you can do is, like I mentioned before, it, vertical and horizontal work up to a point. You possibly could manipulate the line with adding an anchor point at the bottom to try and balance it a little bit more. But if you 
tilt the anchor point in slightly, you can make a curve that's better suited to the shape of the wing. I'm gonna keep this point here um, quite sharp. And then inside, we're gonna do the um, veins or the lines inside the wing. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I've just done. I'm gonna plot a point here, and then I'm just gonna draw this out as far as I want to go, and then hit, hit an escape. I'm gonna hit an escape to close that line off. And then when you've got an active path, you'll see how it's bringing up the plus button. And what it'll do is it'll add a point rather than plotting a point. So what you can do is when that's the case, if you hit shift, you can place an anchor point without adding the anchor point to the existing path. So I'm just gonna quickly plot these. So to draw the eye, I'm gonna start in this top left corner here, and then I'm just gonna draw a horizontal line out and then plot that all the way to the front top right here. I want this kind of be a bit squared off here just to make it a bit more aggressive. So I'm gonna plot a point there and then I'm gonna plot another point here that I'm then gonna scoop back in. So I'm gonna pull out my handles here to curl it back round. And I'm actually not gonna go to the end here. I'm gonna pull it a bit back and then I'm gonna use shift, like I said before, to plot the point so it curves back in, but we've got this little extension here. You know what, I'm probably gonna extend this a little bit further just to try and create a bit of an eyelid. Now we've got the main outline done, I'm gonna show you how to use some of the other functions to tidy up the line work that you've got. Um, we will be looking at the stripes in the beat on another tutorial, but for today, we're just focusing on the outline and how to actually do the line work for this. So now we're gonna go back in and tidy some of these up. We've got um, a couple of keyboard shortcuts that we can use. We can press the command key and it will bring up the direct selection tool and we can do use it to select any anchor points or manipulate any handles that are there. But you'll notice that it's moving both anchor, oh, it's moving both handles. So what we can do is we could actually use the anchor point tool, which is if you press option or alt, and that'll allow you to just move individual handles. So you see what we did here, we can still do that once we've actually plotted the points. I'm just gonna go through this and tidy it up and I'll speed through it so you don't have to watch me um, painstakingly go through this and tidy it up. So there we have it, I've just used a couple of those tools to try and tidy up some of the curves just to try and distribute the weight evenly along the lines. Um, so when you're working with a pen tool, just try and remember to distribute the weight evenly across your lines so you're not creating any awkward flows into curves or anything like that. You just wanna try and look at it and try and make it most aesthetically pleasing as possible. So now we've got the main outlines done, we're gonna leave it for this week and then we're gonna be coming back to it next week when we look at the shape builder. And we're gonna be using that to add the stripes to the bee's body in the file that I'll link in the description box below so you can follow along. I'm gonna be including the handles view so you can actually see the handles that I've got. So if you're struggling or you need any extra little help, you can follow along and actually use it as a bit of a dot to dot. And then next week, like I say, we'll be coming back to it. So share with me your progress on Instagram. I'd love to see how everybody's getting on and how everybody's finding the tutorials. So if you want to be sharing it with me, tag at Digifrog Designs, share with me the direct message. Um, like I say, I'd love to see how everybody's getting on and I'll be showing everybody some love. So there's a quick look on how to master the pen tool and some of its uses. Thanks for watching designers. If you like this video, smash that subscribe button, give it a like, and also don't forget to ring that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. Share this video with your friends on social. It really helps me reach more people, educating them on building better brands and showing what actually goes into designing them. And shop the merch to support the channel and show you part of the DFD crew. I'll catch you next week, designers. Another thing you might notice is the handles themselves are actually horizontal. Horizontal? Another thing you'll notice is the handles themselves are not actually